everybody. Welcome to Build Brunch, the daily morning show where we talk about the latest topics in pop culture. I'm Brittany Jones Cooper. I'm Shannon Coffey. I'm Ali Koba. And I'm Lucas Tim. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Woo! Today, we're going to talk about how Michael Jackson's sons are stepping into the spotlight and why actress Nassim Pedrad is revisiting her teenage years. Plus, singer and songwriter James Maslow stops by to discuss his new single. And later, writers and comedians Taylor Fry and Mike Wazalowski join the table to talk about their new book. But first, you guys, I am beyond excited because it's being reported that Robert Pattinson is like the like lead choice for the new Batman. Mm -hmm. I oh. cannot wait. I am so excited. I think this would be the best choice ever. I know, I know not everyone agrees. <laughs> um, but like the love of my life slash total enemy right here. Yeah. <laughs> like what's wrong with you? I thought you were saying he was the love of your life, yeah. and I was like, what happened to me? Like, yeah, I, I was like, was... no, I mean, I, I want to love you, but you make it so hard sometimes. I do, you know, look, I support, <laughs> and the more that I've thought about this, Robert Pattinson isn't a horrible choice. I just don't see him as like a really kind of like action-y, masculine sort of superhero. But, um, but I just don't get that, that vibe from but, him, but, but maybe he'll surprise Wow, me. bringing masculinity. Yeah, yeah toxic it's masculinity. Batman. No, Batman has always been a gadget boy, okay? He's not a, <laughs> he's like a smart guy who has money, who's but like, that's you know, very his, I get, his I suit think, has abs on but, it. But that's what a, but I the think suit has abs. Also, Robert has abs. I don't know what you're talking about. I, yeah, and I think you're letting the, the Ben Affleck version that we just <laughs> had cloud your judgment. No, I'm thinking Affleck, Christian Bale. Christian Bale, though, who was actually, I think, is the youngest Batman ever. He yeah. was 31 when the first one came out. But he also was kind of this, like, skinny, kind of, like, proper-looking guy. I, I think that's actually the Batman I want to see. You don't expect him to be a superhero, right. and then he puts on the Fair. suit and becomes one. Uh, I'm just happy Ben Affleck, those years are over. <laughs> I skipped out on those years. Rough. He was supposed to direct this film, but he is now done. And I'm, you know, Robert Pattinson, I don't know enough about him. Um, he, I think he's a good actor, so I would be interested to see what he does with this I role. also think Robert Pattinson, like, looks like Batman. Yeah, like, when he's gonna his put that face. mask on and it's just that little mouth with a little snaggle tooth, like, guys. <laughs> Look at his eyebrows. Those We're are Batman pop. eyebrows. I feel like I can yeah. beat that guy up, is all I'm saying. Oh, okay. I, I mean, just don't get Batman. Yeah, but he's but. Just, Batman would be like, Britney's not a bad person, I'm not gonna fight back. I guess she really needs to, like, get some anger out. I'll let her beat me. So your Batman is very emotional. Yes, Robert Pattinson is gonna bring so many levels to this because honestly, everyone's always like, oh, Twilight. Robert has spent the last decade doing amazing indies, proving himself as the actor that he is. And like, honestly, I'm not here for the shade, people. So if you don't stand him, get up and walk out right now. I agree. Also, walk out. Yeah, Christian Bale. Christian Bale was the Dark Knight, right? Yes. Yeah. He's not super strong, Christian Bale. Yeah, but he's got he, edge. He did he get... He had a darkness. But Robert it. Pattinson has such a darkness if you've seen any of his films. Yeah, well, he's very dark. Any of you his have, films. He does have... I'm telling you, he's dark. <laughs> He's we're dark. just we're just arguing with someone who's just being a devil's advocate. You've seen <laughs> no, I really. I you've seen none of his work. You've admitted. I have not. I saw the water you for. No, about look, Batman's I saw water for I saw water for elephants, and I saw the what? one where the trade the World Trade Center went down, and I saw the Twilight. Well, and I've seen Brittany's, movie. Brittany's defense, yeah, Christian yeah. Bale had a plethora of movies, and he like was such American a Psycho, and did really incredible yeah. dark. But I actually movies. see so I just, Robert Pattinson in that vein. So I'm saying okay. he'll, maybe he'll surprise me. Yeah, yeah. I think he's going to surprise <laughs> everyone who is thinking that he's not enough to be Batman. And I'm just, I want him to know I'm here. Okay. I'm here for him. By his side. Shannon's Let's here for you, Robert Pattinson. <laughs> CBD is literally in just about anything you can imagine these days. Now including products to help women on their periods. While the trend of CBD <laughs> menstrual products is on the rise, there's still plenty of research to be done about how these items work to help ease pain. Here to chat about this latest trend in feminine products is the host of In Case You Missed It by HuffPost, Heather Garter. Hey, good morning. Hey, look, Heather. Look, I'm so happy they gave you that intro. I'm very happy oh, too. Experience. Well, because I do care. I am a man I who cares. Men and... can talk about periods. Yes, yes. Also, and men... let's be clear. Can. Men can have periods. <laughs> That's 100 percent yes. true. Just and non-binary people. So it's true. Like, let's open it up and say people with periods. Yeah. There we go. Right. People with periods. And um, I'm. I mean, of course, I've never. I've never experienced what women go through. But <laughs> Very, very, <laughs> and, I, and I try to empathize and understand as much as I can, but CBD products. Yes. Can, it's like nonstop. Like, there's no. every sort of, there's gum, tea, everything is CBD in it. So, 
Why do you think that is that now we're going to period products? Oh, well, I mean, it's just part of this huge trend that is actually like a booming business, guys. By 2025, Forbes estimates that this business is going to be worth $16 billion. Makes sense. Which is crazy. It wow. makes how why do you think it makes sense? It makes sense because everybody cares about CBD yep. and cannabis these days, and so yeah, and it's I growing. Think, I think the reason that it's such a big trend is because people want natural remedies. We're tired of just pumping ourselves with chemicals. And so, of course, CBD comes from the marijuana, mm -hmm. which is a plant, which is is natural, but the reason is <laughs> why are you I just think for it's people who don't know, it's, like, it's a plant. It's, a plant. <laughs> it's natural. Like I think, like our audience is like, we know. We it. know it's natural, right? <laughs> but the reason that CBD is so popular is because it comes from marijuana, but it doesn't get you high right. like traditional yeah. marijuana. However, there's all these claims that it supposedly helps other things, including now women's periods. So tell us about the natural pain and anxiety relief associated with CBD. Okay, so supposedly, and I put a big like asterisk on that, we'll get to that in a second why it's all supposedly, but there's two strains of CBD, CBD1 and CBD2. One is supposed to help your anxiety, help release all your stress, and then the second one too, CBD2, is supposed to reduce inflammation. Mm. So the theory behind any CBD product, not just like tampons and things we're gonna talk about, but coffee, you got some CBD in there? This is some tea. Tea, yeah, got some tea. tea in there. Yeah, any of those products is supposed to reduce both your stress and inflammation you have. Yeah. So what are some of these CBD products that women are using? All right. So this is this was a deep dive for me. I, I am obviously aware that CBD is in like everything, but yeah. I didn't realize that it was like getting to the women's products, right? right? And I really wanted to explore it because this week was Women's Health Week, mm -hmm. and you got tampons. We got suppositories, wow. bath salts. Um, side note: Whoopi Goldberg has a whole line of PMS. CBD, mm -hmm. cannabis, wow. bath salts, mm -hmm. which is interesting. Um, also, just like the regular CBD oil is supposed to just help all of your pain, including period pain. Mm -hmm. And then vaginal balm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Body balm that you just rub down there is supposed <laughs> to release all of this inflammation. <laughs> I love Lucas's face right now is classic. I mean, I have a CBD salve that I use on like back pain. Yeah. And it, uh, Does it really within work? Within 10 minutes, I do feel relaxed. So 100%, I've used it on my like abdomen oh, for cramps. For sure. I, did, I haven't like purchased specific products, but I've used my salve like, wherever right. I need it. And see, that's the thing, too, is like, even though these are marketed towards period pain, like, I feel anything you just like rubbed on there is going to be fine. Yeah, well, not anything, Heather. But. Well, you know, <laughs> CBD-infused <laughs> things that yeah. rubbed down there are going to be fine. Yeah, yeah, I saw CBD hummus. Why don't you rub that down there? <laughs> Wait, is that a real the CBD yeah, hummus? There's well, CBD, there's hummus CBD hummus everything. Yeah. Yeah. I don't yeah, So CBD. don't rub everything down <laughs> yeah. there. I know, there's just a lot. There's In like case CBD you missed it. Don't be like, CBD hummus right up the but, but, it, but it's okay. <laughs> that's <laughs> right up, I love. That's, that's our tagline. <laughs> right up the bat. But it's not guaranteed to have the same effect on all women, right? Right. And see, this is why I think it's a little problematic. And this is not just about CBD products for women's health, this is about the CBD products in general. Because, guys, I hate to break it to you, but CBD is not tested. It's not mm. FDA approved. Nobody's done research on this, not in humans. A few have been studied in animals, but we're only talking about just, like, the drops. We're not even talking about the stuff that you, you rub. Yeah. And while some people like you may get an effect for that, I have the drops, feel nothing mm. whenever uh. I take it. It really didn't do anything for me. But, you know, that's the same with a lot of medicine, too. Some people, you know... Tylenol or Advil don't help cramps. Mydol does not help me. Yeah. Well, a lot of people so, with chronic inflammation, they actually need some of the THC to feel the full effect. Mm -hmm. So I have like a medical marijuana license in New York City, mm -hmm. and right. the the products that I get always have a one to one ratio, and that helps. So it's Fourth worth second. investigating whether right. or not you have. Right, and you know the other Good part middle. of the other part when I was investigating this too is that it was really hard to find these women's products that didn't contain THC, mm. oh. which of course makes it difficult if you don't live in a state yeah. that even offers that, that it's where, where it's legal to have. And of course, if you want to stick the hummus up there, you're going to go to work <laughs> a little high. <laughs> yeah. You know, and that was the other thing too, is like you really do have to look at the ingredients Absolutely. for all of these things. The suppositories was the only one that I found that was 100% THC free. And everything else had a little bit to a lot of bit. Whoopi Goldberg, by the way, is like a half and half ratio. So oh. you can put, soak in that bath and you're feeling it great afterwards amazing, yeah so I mean that, there's yeah. just things to, to think about you know we need more research on this if you're looking at the products be sure that you are looking at the CBD to THC ratio especially if you live in a state where it's not yeah. not legal yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. you don't want to be arrested for putting hummus up your bag <laughs> that would yeah. be like the oh. worst like arrest keep coming back ever. Ever. honestly yeah. I'm that's the lesson of this story Heather yeah. thank you so much for oh, joining you're us you're welcome thank you guys so much you can catch In Case You Missed It by HuffPost on HuffPost.com and Yahoo's Roku channel.
Michael Jackson's sons, Blanket and Prince, could be the next YouTube stars. The brothers are launching a new YouTube series reviewing movies with their cousin, Taj Jackson. I think this is so cool, you guys. I have loved Blanket since, you know. The window. Since the window. window. Dangled over um, a balcony. He's my favorite of the children. I think he oh. is so cute, so gorgeous. I secretly wanted him to be in the limelight always. Yeah. I thought he had the most potential to be a pop star. Right. And getting to watch him now as like, do, like you know, a little movie reviewer, eating pizza the whole he's time. He's so cute. Like, he's adorable. He looks like my gangly little cousin. <laughs> Look at him. Yeah. I do remember hearing a couple years ago that he could actually sing as well. Yeah. And he has like the look and he has that really chill vibe. So I'm with you. I really thought of all of his kids. He might be the one who kind of follows in the family mm -hmm. path. Or might be actually related to Michael Jackson. Or might yeah. actually be oh, yeah, Jackson. Yeah. He really does look like a Jackson to me. Yeah. He actually does resemble Jackson because the other two are Whitey McWhiterson, White, 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 White. <laughs> well, I, I like calling She's them their full eyes. names, Prince Michael Jackson and Prince Michael Jackson II. Mm -hmm. Yes. Those are their names. Mm -hmm. they're, they're biblical names. Mm -hmm. well, Prince um, Michael Jackson the first. Yes, the first. That is not Michael Jackson. No, it's not. No, it's absolutely not. I mean, it is his son, but like biologically, genetically, fucking Tucker over here. <laughs> not Michael Jackson. Tyler. Son. You know what I mean? This is like. But you know, the, the, the video is, it's, they admit it's very rough. It's very raw. It's just a couple guys eating pizza, talking about the Avengers. But you know what? I'm, I'm happy for them because it's rough not. Rough and raw. I'm not ready to hear anything about the Jackson family with rough oh, and raw. Oh God, maybe we should have used wrong, different words then. But <laughs> Too soon. I'm just happy right. they're putting themselves out there yeah. and they feel comfortable with themselves because it is not easy being um, the children of Michael Jackson, yeah. whether you love him as the king of pop or watch Leaving Neverland have bad taste in your mouth from him. I think it's so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They get wrong <laughs> choice of words again. Yeah, I'm moving on. I really just love that, that their first movie that they reviewed is Avengers Endgame, <laughs> which is like such an epic film. Great yeah. choice for them to start with. And I really do love that it's very raw because, I do, yes. you know, um, like YouTube is all about authenticity and I think they'll really will have a chance. And I didn't know that, um, I didn't know that Prince was making all these uh, motorcycle vids. <laughs> I don't know. I do love that these are obviously kids with memes, memes yeah. and that they were like, it's raw and we're just doing it because we're passionate about it and we love it. I think that is so cute and I hope that people like don't dip into the comments and attack them. I hope people are really supportive because it, yeah. it must be hard to step out and do something right. on your own that you're passionate about. And it's just like, well, I think it's so adorable. Based off what I read, it's the Michael Jackson fanatics are supporting them Good. so much Good. because they, of all the King of Pop years. could do no wrong in their eyes. So they are, they are behind these people. The video already has 100,000 views. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm sure every movie reviewer works for Entertainment Weekly is like, God damn it, I worked my ass <laughs> yeah. off to get this degree in movie and film and now these two assholes. But, um, you know, I mean, I'm sure they're gonna, people are gonna like watching them. Just a bunch of bros talking about superhero movies. Yeah, I think it's There's fun. There's a market for it. I can just watch a video of him eating pizza. Yeah. I why I think it's so funny. <laughs> Honestly, he, the pizza doesn't look good, though. That, it I'm looks more mad like about, really bad pizza. It looks pizza. like really bad I pizza. I watch a video of anyone eating pizza. Yeah, yeah. it's not a good look. No, I love pizza. No, I mean, no, I, oh, you I said could. you could, right? Yeah, oh, I could. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't, actually. Oh, I just really like pizza. Oh, I do yeah. too. I like pizza's the best thing. I, I think you just want pizza yeah. right now. I would love to be like a cam girl who just eats food and then spits right. it into a Ziploc bag and mails it to people. Okay. Like that's like would be awesome. That'd that's be cool. a thing. I can huh? see that for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Visualize I that, it. I hope that works for you. That girl's like, I need to get up now. And I was like, I gave you a chance when you weren't standing Robert Pattinson. <laughs> now you're stuck, huh? <laughs> Moving on, guys. Now it's time for our first guest. James Maslow is best known as the star of both the top rated Nickelodeon show Big Time Rush and best-selling music group of the same name, but now he's making headlines for his solo music. Today he joins us to talk about his new single, Love You Sober. Everyone, please give a warm Bill Blunt welcome to James Maslow. Woo! 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 Sorry, Sorry. Nice to meet you. Hi guys, how are you? Hey, Glad you're good. I'm good. Yay! Thanks welcome. for coming on. Hey, how are you? Good. good. <laughs> just yayed in your face. I <laughs> love it. I will take it. That's why I come, actually. It's for the yays, the Great. hype. Awesome. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yeah, well, we're glad you're here. So this new single, tell us about it. Where did this idea come from? So Love You Sober is, uh, it really is the first of a bunch of music I'm putting out. And even though I've put out other music as a solo artist before, this I'm considering the first real push, because it's mm -hmm. the first time that, as an independent artist, I said I'm not putting anything out until I have song after song after song ready with budgets for videos and publicity yeah. and everything, and that's what's up with this one. So this is kind of a tease. It's uh, very much personal to me about past relationships in my life. And talking about videos and all that, I already shot the music video for it in Detroit two weekends ago. It's like a James Bond opening sequence. Ooh. We have helicopters and planes, and I use the director from a huge World War II film I just did. So 
I don't know, I'm excited. I'm blending my cinematic world with film with my music that I love. So Yeah. And is the go. the vibe of the song like I'll love you even if I'm not drunk? Or like what's the sort of <laughs> Um I wish it were that positive. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I, honestly, there there is a literal aspect to it where I've been in several relationships where I looked into it several months in and mm -hmm. realized, man, we haven't gone out without having at least a couple drinks. Right. And then I, I would kind of set back and go, I hope that this infatuation, this lust, this potential love is real without all the extra stuff. Mm. And uh, unfortunately, in a couple of cases, it wasn't. So that's what this is, kind of a hope in the future that I can have everything that I thought that I had before with somebody that is down to uh, not always have to go out and have a party setting with it. I think that's really relatable for a lot of people. Especially, you know, when you're young and you're 20s, mm -hmm. like, what do you do? You say, hey, let's go for a drink. Totally. Normal thing. But eventually that becomes the norm, and that's what I'm trying uh, not to yeah. keep happening. Yeah. I was on a date yesterday, and he says he doesn't drink, and I was like, we'll never work, and I left. <laughs> I was like, that was it, goodbye. He's like, you need yeah. a balance, We're yeah. from two different worlds. <laughs> feel like, I, I, I feel I dig it. I need a balance, but where do you find the person you can go and fight right. with and have right. fun, but also wake up on a Saturday morning and go and you know go to the gym, go boxing, right. something Farmers like that. Market. Yeah. yeah. Well, you mentioned the video. It's going to be out in the first week in June, right? Yeah, I think we're going to drop it June 5th is the idea. So really exciting about that. And you already kind of teased that it's, it's going to be a big budget helicopter with James Bond. Is there anything else you can possibly give us? Because already, I'm already really into it. <laughs> um, well, fantastic. Keep talking it up. Thank you. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's the first of many. And so as, as exciting as this is, it's, we've got elements. We had like a rain machine built and fire machine built and all these beautiful surrealistic um, things. Oh, with a shot of actually the helicopter that I'm oh, flying in it. Oh, wow. look at you. Um, I don't have my helicopter uh, pilot's license, but I am getting my license to fly planes oh, yeah. because of uh, Wolfhound, the World War II film right. that I'm playing a pilot in. So there's elements of that. And then the next one, Delirious, which is my next single coming out June 21st, the video, the song, everything, couldn't be more different. Right, it's more of a, like an electro pop style. Like, it is right? very much, you've got a break beat with it, it's throwback almost, Justin Timberlake, a little bit of Bruno, mm. um, very sexy, very sexual, very upbeat. And that music video is going to be shot in Malibu. Uh, couldn't be more different. Couldn't be less classy in comparison. <laughs> <laughs> and once again, you know, the, I have both sides to me. And so I'm really trying to show it off authentically through this new batch of music. Cool. Wow. And you are the cover star of Bella magazine. I am. Somehow they put this ugly mug on that, uh, that magazine. So <laughs> oh thank you guys God. very much. <laughs> yeah. It's too late we now. It's on stand. <laughs> Can't do anything about it. Ready printed it. What can readers expect from the interview? Well, it's the first time that I, I speak about how uh, authentic and how real this music is to me. You know, I've written every song and created it literally in my house with my best friend, Eugene. Uh, he's the most talented musician and producer that I know. So it's, it's as, as truthful as it gets. And I do talk about my new uh, TV show, which is right. hitting the CW. The big stage. Yeah, the big stage. This is actually Ooh. the first interview I've been able to talk about. Yeah, it, it is. Yeah. I'm very yeah. excited. It's. Um, Airs next month. Airs yeah. next month. Yeah. A little exclusive. No, I'm excited, man. I mean, it's pretty cool to have a you know primetime show airing all summer. I'm hosting it with uh, my co-host Elizabeth Stanton, who's amazing. Mm. And people ask me, what is it about? And it's basically we've sourced the most amazing talent from around the world, from China to people with residencies in Vegas, and brought them to our big stage, if you will. Mm -hmm. And without the uh, pressure of competition, because it's not a competition-based mm -hmm. show. We're allowing people to perform at their best, and we're just sitting there getting to watch and host and comment and share it with the rest of the world. So wow, it's really cool. It's I really love that it doesn't have a competition yes. aspect to it. Yeah, I mean. I, I feel like that sort of takes the fun out of a lot of those shows when you're just constantly comparing and mm -hmm. pitting people against each other. But just being able to enjoy a wide variety of acts sounds really delightful. Yeah. Sure. I mean, and as an artist myself, I know the pressure of when you go up there. I can only imagine, you mm -hmm. know, it's like, oh, I'm going to perform, and if I'm not good, if I get voted off, that means I'm terrible. Yeah. I mean, it's. You know, especially for new artists and emerging artists, that's got to be very, very scary, you know, hoping you get voted off every week. So on our show, none of that. They just get to perform at their best, and we get to enjoy some of the most amazing talent uh, I've ever seen. That's very awesome. Cool. Yeah. And um, what's it like switching gears between doing music and acting? You mentioned you have Wolfhound coming out. You also have My Boyfriend's Meds coming out. Yes, Wolfhound's in post. Hopefully we'll uh, figure out distribution next mm. year. But before that, My Boyfriend's Meds is a... a Big old movie that I'm lucky enough to be a part of. It's going to uh, a couple thousand theaters August 30th. You are busy. But big yeah. cast in that film, right? Yeah, huge cast. And yes, I am. Thank you. I'm glad. <laughs> I hope I don't look too tired today. Just for doing. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, Jaime Camille leads it, um, who just got his own show picked up, which I'm so proud of. Uh, Spinoff from uh, Jane the Virgin, mm -hmm. so proud of him. Yeah, Brooke Shields, Jason Alexander, um, Kevin from The Office, Brian Bumgarner. <laughs> so 
I'm just blessed to be a part of a, a cast this talented and big. And it's, I guess, the biggest movie that I've done thus far and looks at the, uh, the theatrical release. So oh. a lot of stuff going on. So wow. much. We're looking forward to seeing it. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you guys for having me. Thank you. And you can listen to Love You Sober on all streaming platforms. And be sure to look out for the music video when it drops next month. Thank you for joining yeah. us. Well, Nassim Pedrad is heading back to high school as a 14-year-old boy. The former <laughs> SNL cast member is set to star in a new TBS comedy, Chad, where she will play a Persian teenager navigating through the awkward ups and downs of high school while also figuring out his cultural identity. Take a look. Today's the first day of high school, and we only get one shot at this. I had sex. What? And I want to be popular. <laughs> Why? Because fitting in rocks. Oh, my body. My body. Are you wearing leather shorts? Yeah, they're my mom's. Stop wearing your parents' clothes! You're your own boy, Peter! You wanted us to be so Muslim, you should have raised us in freaking Rommel Pladadon. You're just mad that you're a late bloomer and mom's getting more action than you. Nikki, no offense, but you are a whore. Chad, I said no offense! God! Boss, don't chat rap. You don't wanna get smacked. Hey, boss, don't chat grease. You don't know my jeans. Yeah, hey, boss. I, well, I'm, I'm really excited for this because I've been reading about this for like three and a half yeah. years now because Fox picked it up to pilot in 2016. So this has been such a labor of love um, for the writers and like the actors. So it's really cool that TBS is putting this on the air now. Yeah, I agree. I, uh, go ahead. Oh, I just can't wait. I mean, like we all love Pen15 uh, and yeah. that is such a fun time uh, like of your life to look back on and like joke about. So like even more of that is going to be great. And uh, Nassim from SNL, Loved her so much. Mm -hmm. Loved so many of these SNL players who like never get their shine. Yeah. And seeing her like do something like this, it's like it's kind of how I feel about Jenny Slate. Whenever mm -hmm. I see Jenny Slate yeah. do anything, I'm right. just so pissed she's not still on the show. And I love every project she touches. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm excited. And when we think about it, we know that in SNL they're like stuck in those contracts, and it is like when they leave, they have freedom to pick projects that are more authentic to them. And you see her in this role, and you're like. Oh my God, you're shining so much bigger than you ever did on SNL. You know totally. what I mean? Like this is gonna be huge for her. Yeah. yeah. That's why sometimes when like there's like a Jenny Slate, I'm like kind of happy she got away quicker because I'm like, you can do whatever you want. Yeah. Now. You don't have to like stand in the back and be like, I'm in the shadows, sort of being appreciated, but not giving the chance really. Yeah. I'm so, so excited for this yeah. show. I think it's gonna be really fun. To me, this is like a dream role to get to dress up like a little boy. Yeah. Like, you, right. if you know me, you know I love dressing like a man. Yeah. And like getting to wear like a short wig and just be like, hey, what's up? Like, I just think that must be so much fun to shoot. And I'm honestly, I'm jealous. I can't wait to watch. And I love like with Pin 15, it's so funny to watch a woman in her 30s go back to middle school and mm -hmm. play in that mindset. And especially as a little boy, like you couldn't yeah. cast a little boy in this role. It would not be as effective. Having her in this character yeah. is going to be so unique. And we don't get to see that. Especially really, that she's a woman. Like, I know. Yeah. It's so good. Like, it really reminds me of something you would do, too. Oh, oh for sure. sure. No, Thanks. seriously. Just because, and like, you know, the, some of the character reels you have when you, like, yeah. pretend to be, like, a young dude. <laughs> but, like, that vibe, it's just so funny. Like, it just is going to add this whole other layer of, like... Right. You yeah. make me think you're, like, Justin Bieber when you're just, like... <laughs> yeah, like, like, there's, like, a way... Most, <laughs> like, the way that, like, little boys vibe. move. It's just so much fun to embody so, a character that's so different than mm -hmm. what you have to be in your own skin. And yeah. I love that this is happening. I hope that this becomes like a new wave where people can really play outside of who they are and it'd be really cool like I know we always like joke around that like old people play teenagers like we get 25 year olds playing Riverdale right. teens but I think this is the way to do it like right. make it very character -y. and if this is like a new wave in comedy I'm here for it especially yeah. because it means our old day. asses can be in shows <laughs> yeah. right yeah get it all it's also doing what Ped 15 did too with looking at <laughs> cultural cultural issues and being a person of color and I think that's also an interesting way like looking Looking back at instead of having a kid portrayed now as an adult, you're able to put like all the stuff you've learned for being a person of color oh, yeah. for 30 something years, totally. now being to the body of a 14 year old and like embody all of that. What you see from the little clip is like, if you want us to be so Muslim, you could have right. yeah. thrown us up in whatever <laughs> country he makes up. But she's um, Iranian American. She's Iranian American. I just think it's, yeah, it's, I'm, just, I'm just really happy to see this being made. TBS, who, you know, is just a basic cable channel, but they're doing Samantha B, they're doing great stuff in comedy. Yeah. So hopefully they'll, they'll keep pushing forward. Those Greg and Darla reruns. <laughs> <laughs> Big thank you, Reroz. Come on, Greg. I love that show. It's so good. Darma and Greg, man. Friends. CBS kills Mike it. Mike and Molly. Friends on DVD. Stop, yeah. you it's addict. It's all Big like Bang Theory and like Tyler Perry shows. I just turn on CBS and it's just like the same shit that played the year I was born. Like, the same thing. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 Yeah.
Now it's time for our next guest. Taylor Frey and Mike Wazalowski are rising writers and comedians who have just released a new book, Two Trains Leave Paris, Number of Problems for Wor World People. Use humor to offer readers an opportunity to experience math like never before. Everyone, please give a warm Bill Bunch welcome to Taylor Frey and Mike Wazalowski. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Thanks for coming on. Hi. Thanks so much for having me. Hi. 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 Thank you for having me. Good. How are you? Welcome. Thank Hi. You so How are you? Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hi. Hi. Good to meet you. Welcome. Hey. Being here. Thanks so much. I'm so into this book because as Thank someone, you so much. I used to really, really like math, and then there came a time <laughs> when I just like started hating it. And it was eight, it was calculus in senior year of high school, and I that's when <laughs> my my and then that was the last time I really did math, and then I never loved it ever again. But reading this book, it seems like okay, this is a fun way to find math again, right? Yeah. Tell us about it. If you choose to find math. Yeah. yeah. If you choose to find, if you yeah, want yeah, to. If you yeah. want yeah. to. As we say, calculus is the thing where uh, it's actually uh, like the midlife crisis of math. Yes. Mm. Uh, you can only get to it if you spend a lot of time thinking about infinity. Mm -hmm. uh, Jesus. That's it. Exactly. So I, it makes sense to me that like calculus is why when yeah. you would turn back. Um, but we go through a bunch of different subjects. So we do algebra, geometry, yep, probability, a lot of statistics. In there. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the point is that you can read it and learn all the math, or you can uh, just kind of read these stories mm -hmm. and get involved in these people's personal problems, basically. But, yeah. And what was the inspiration behind writing it? Basically, it's like if you know word problems like we all do, uh, it's the sort of thing where if you ever read one that's like, John has 144 eggs. Right. And you ever wonder, like, but why? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but why? Why does he have why those does he eggs? eggs? So, so we just started <laughs> asking ourselves those questions. and started answering uh, them. Yeah, so we started writing this when we were working together in a sketch comedy group. So we met, <laughs> started writing together just down the street. We went to NYU. Yeah. So it's happy to be back here on our yeah. in our home turf. Love um, we love NYU. We love it too. We love being on the show. We love your, your fruit and vegetable vibe. <laughs> Thank uh, you. Yeah. We love your mugs. Mm -hmm. Mugs. Um, your fruit and vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> we occasionally have bagels at yeah. a Yeah. Oh, okay, no. we were wondering about the food motif. It, it always, changes right? based off the mood, the weather, the weather. how we're feeling. Seasonal. Yeah. Seasonal. <laughs> nice. So the Far book discusses right? math is universal, but it's kind of often undervalued subject in school. Why do you think that is? Because it's alienating, right? Mm. And because it's hard to relate to, like you want to people. I think English or things like that can be easier to relate to because you yeah. can say, "Oh, well, here's how I see myself being involved in this." And math's kind of just—it's very um, objective. Right. There's not really a lot of room for you to relate to you it. You can't see yourself in a number. Yeah, you're, it, yeah. and right. it's very like—it's uh, very black and white. There's not a lot of gray area, and people are just mostly gray area in my right. experience. Do you guys like math? I I'm hesitant to say that I do like math because oh. I spent my because I spent my whole life being like, I hate math. Right. And because I felt bad at it and I felt yeah. stupid. And then I think like I don't know if you guys can relate to this as a girl of being like, then you get to the place where you're like, oh my gosh, like don't even talk to me about math. Like oh, get yeah. that away. I'm like bad I'm so bad at that. Yeah. And you just say that to yourself. Well, girls over. are taught that they're not supposed you're to be good taught, at math. And science. once you realize yeah. that you're bad, you're like, okay, well, I better just like own it and keep it as far away from me as possible. And instead of like being in that middle ground of being like, yeah, maybe it's a little bit hard, but like, is it that much harder for me than it is for anybody else? Right. right. No. But I do like math more now after working on this book. Good. That gives me hope. <laughs> like, and I don't <laughs> like it in the way that, like, I don't go home and be like, I'm really, like, enjoying solving for X. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy it like that. But I was just telling you, I was getting super stressed out. I was, like, traveling a bunch, and I was like, geez, I can't, like, figure out, like, how to calm down, and just, I just got to do one thing at a time. And I do this thing where I'll, like, flip open a page of the book and just, like, put my finger down, and I landed on um, PEMDAS, which is the order of operations. Yeah, yeah. exponents, multiplication, division. I know. Please, okay. <laughs> Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Uh, excuse her for what? Why? What's she doing? She has Spins? hysteria. Right, She's yeah. up there, whatever. <laughs> but I landed on that, and I was like, oh, like, just do... Just do one thing at a time. Right. I was like, okay, like I just used math. I didn't use it how I thought I was going yeah. to, but yeah. I did use PEMDAS. PEMDAS. <laughs> I did do it. <laughs> and what was the actual like writing process for trying to make math fun? Because I feel like even writing comedy, like sometimes you can get lost and be like, is this even funny? So if I was writing a math book to be comedic, I'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> how, like what did you guys do to not get lost in numbers? 
we kind of tried to think about what was going on behind the scenes with every character. Wow. Um, and we tried to think about why someone would be in a situation where they had to solve two equations, or like why someone would have to calculate a percentage trying to figure out how much to tip and things like that. Uh, so things that are relatable, but kind of pushing them to the extremes. Mm. And you were trying to teach me how to do math. So it kind of started by Mike being like, I'm going to teach you how to do math. I'm going to teach you how to like math. And I was like, cool, I'm going to teach you how to hate math. Right. <laughs> so, and then I think that conflict inherently like ended up making us laugh. Right. And we had each other, so we didn't have to do it alone. So you can always like have, it's like your friend. Mm -hmm. So Aww. that's kind of how we we're able to write it and have it be mm. so enjoyable, I think. Mm -hmm. And how are people receiving the book? Because when you hear a book about math, you just want to be like, uh, I'm not going to read that yeah. by choice. <laughs> but when I saw your book and I started skipping through it, I was like, oh, I'm having fun. <laughs> I hope you like it, because it's, 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 you don't have to do the math to enjoy this book, we hope. But right. if you want to, you can. Yeah. The are numbers... you fighting people on the streets? Like, read this, it's fun. <laughs> like, what are you doing? I think that like a lot of the response that I've been getting is, it's like, it's, people are curious about it mm -hmm. because it's like, it's kind of a challenge yeah. of being like, how are you gonna even pretend that you can make me interested yeah. in the most boring subject <laughs> I ever had, was exposed to. Right. So it's, I think like part of the cell is just in the curiosity of like, how could you even but make the, this possible? The title inspires curiosity. Two trains leave Paris. I wanna know what happens, why, what, when, what? what were they gonna, when are they gonna meet? I don't know, like it's, it just, wow. a lot of flashbacks. Other things, yeah. were like, wait, is oh, it flashbacks. like a love story? <laughs> <laughs> oh no, it's the math bomb, SAT stuff, two trains, right. you know, yeah. Right, exactly. But you guys met in Tish, right? That's yeah. right. Yeah. So what were you studying there? We met in Tish too, by the way. Oh, right on. Yeah. How are you? Um, cool. we, we were in drama school. Yeah. You were in drama school. Yeah. Acting. You were in drama yes. school and you wanted to teach her math? This this happened afterwards, but uh, I, okay. did, I, I did get out of drama school and I was like, oh, oh, no jobs. Uh, and then, <laughs> cool, 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 cool. <laughs> and then uh, so I became a math tutor. Okay. Uh, wow. I grew up, my parents are math teachers and a lot of my family, uh, so I had that knowledge just when you have a ti-83 at home when you're four oh, yeah. years old you, you, you pick stuff up ti-83 uh, man yeah. that got some laughs yeah. 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 Killing it. how long did it take you uh, to put together this book about three years wow. almost exactly wow wow it's That's like impressive. game of thrones season this yeah. book <laughs> i think this will hopefully be more exciting than the than the, than than the show the <laughs> no, no, exactly. so you guys have a show actually tomorrow at the new york and poets we cafe do. in the yeah. village which i love that spot we do uh, too, so what's really. the show going to be like well, we don't want to give away too much, okay. but it's, you will not be asked to solve any math or do mm. any math at the show, so mm. definitely none of that. Sketch comedy, stand-up comedy, cool. yep. maybe a couple other surprises. Yeah, maybe some weird circus, somebody doing the splits, we're not We sure. don't know, we yeah. don't know. Well, yeah. But tickets are available now, where do they get them? Yeah, they, you, get you, get them. Get, you can get them on uh, numberproblems.brownpapertickets.com is where you can go. This seems to be uh, our There's poster a, yeah. right yeah. there. Um, it, and while we have you here, yeah. we want to try to solve a problem. And you're going to walk us through that, right? We'd love to okay, do that. So let's Thank you so much. It's We're going to learn. Age math problem. That's okay. right. So, Take the lead. Uh, so, and thank you to whoever printed up these beautiful <laughs> yeah. cards. You can keep those. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Have amazing yeah. producers here. Laminate them. <laughs> thank you. Uh, okay, so this problem is, what's my age? When asked his age, your math teacher, Mr. Newman, responds, if you multiply my age by four, then subtract two, the answer is 110. Part A, how old is he? Part B, why does Mr. Newman talk B. this way? B. <laughs> yeah, which is the most important question. Yeah. Why is he talking this way? My brain just froze. <laughs> yeah. I can't, yeah. Uh, so if you choose to solve part A, which you can, uh, you would first identify the unknown, uh, which in this case, the unknown is Mr. Newman's age. Mm -hmm. uh, and we would choose a letter to represent the unknown. You want to pick a, pick a letter mark? So I'll choose A. No. No, it's the wrong one. That's the wrong one. Got to choose something more mysterious. Yes. So we'll choose X. X. Um, <laughs> X. Uh, and so then uh, it's if you multiply the age by 4 and subtract 2, the answer is 110. So you can write it as 4X minus 2 equals 110. Or you can do what I just did, which is start thinking about like just the unknown in general and get completely lost. Like, like, like approaching hell and like, why am I searching for the unknown? I'm never I to thinking find about it. black holes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It just sort of like creeps in on you, right? Yeah. Which mm -hmm. is totally okay, and you're cool. still doing the problem. Awesome. There's no test. So. Awesome. 
And to solve, if you think back, you can now, you want to isolate x, because the way to really figure out what's going on is to isolate uh, yourself from everything mm -hmm. else. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, 4x minus 2 equals 110. You add 2 to each side. 4x equals 112. Divide by 4, and you got 28. Right. And that's so the age. Your numa is 28. The These kind of math problems, math problems make me so happy. Like when I used to do this in school, like solving for x, mm -hmm. nothing made me more fulfilled. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you really? all felt the same way. It's just because you got the answer. You found out I what it was. It's yeah. clean. Yeah. It's organized. I'm with you. you. Your yeah. nerd is no showing. <laughs> I'm such a nerd. No, I agree. I used to love math until I got a really mean teacher who was always yelling at us. And I was like, I don't know why you're harshing my vibe. Like, <laughs> you're being so negative right learn. now. Math mm -hmm. could be chill. And you, you guys show up. And I'm like, where were you yeah. 45 <laughs> years ago? <laughs> Well, Taylor, Mike, you guys are not mean teachers. You guys are great teachers. Mm -hmm. Thank yeah, you thank so you. much for joining thank us. You thank you for having us. So much. Thank thank you so much. Thank you. Everyone, make sure to pick up a copy of Two Trains Leave Paris wherever books are sold. And we just wanted to take a moment to say rest in peace to Grumpy Cat, who passed away peacefully on Tuesday. We put together a small tribute for our favorite felines. Our thoughts and prayers are with Grumpy Cat's loved ones. Her spirit will live on forever. We'll see you all on Monday, same time, same table. Bye, everyone. Stay grumpy. <laughs> Goodbye.